14.1 inch, $2,000 M2 Pro chip, iPad Pro, WWDC 2023. That's my big prediction, I'm gonna explain how, stick around. What's going on with this 14.1 inch M2 iPad Pro and what does this mean for the 20 inch foldable touchscreen device we've been hearing rumors about? We're gonna break it all down today, so hit the subscribe button and click the bell so you don't miss as we cover all things iPad Pro, Apple Talk, and Pro Audio. I'm Chris Grant Jr., it's The Granite Geek Show. Now before we get started, if you like the music in today's video, go ahead and check out the link down below to Upbeat. It is my favorite subscription service for the dopest music for your YouTube videos. I use them in every video that I do. Helps out the channel as well. So without further ado, let's dive into it. Now this video is gonna primarily focus on the 14.1 inch M2 iPad Pro and all that Apple could be doing with it. But I'm also gonna talk about the 20 inch, but I did a full video on that. Links down below or right up here in the card, you can click on that. So let's Let's dive in. We already saw the M2 released at WWDC with the MacBook Air M2, full redesign and all that kind of stuff. So from a chip standpoint, we already know what to expect. We can expect pretty much identical performance from the M2 MacBook Air and M2 iPad Pro. And although the Air has a larger chassis with which to dissipate heat, neither of them has active cooling like a fan. And so we saw that it didn't make much of a difference with the M1 and we would expect the same from the M2. That's going to mean about 18% more performance power with the CPU and a 35% jump in graphics performance. We're gonna get to that a little bit later on, but let's talk about the chassis itself. Obviously 14.1 inches, it's the largest iPad ever created. Um, Ross Young had gone back and forth on some rumors, first saying as short ago as June 9th that it would receive mini LEDs in ProMotion, and then today as of the recording of this video, he was saying that was no longer the case. I'm gonna stick with yes, it's gonna have mini LED and ProMotion display. No exclusive leaks or rumors, just thinking about what makes most logical sense for the direction that Apple's heading with the iPad Pro. We know that the Pro Display XDR was a 32 inch behemoth. They brought down that display technology to the 12.9 inch iPad Pro and we know they can do it on a slightly bigger scale with the MacBook Pros. And the only reason that the 11 inch iPad Pro didn't have mini LED was because, well, they hadn't gotten the display technology to be that small yet. So now that we're going large, Larger, almost an inch bigger than the 12.9 inch iPad Pro. It just makes too much sense to add this as well as ProMotion and we certainly know that the M2 chip could handle it. Now I think there are two reasons for Apple going with this 14.1 inch screen size and we can't forget this means a bigger chassis as well. Really one core reason overall and that's that Apple's looking to compete with and replace eventually MacBooks with the iPad. It's going to be that one device to rule them all but I think what's pushing them to do it now versus versus later is Stage Manager. And I've been using iPad OS 16 for well over a week now. And one thing that I've noticed is that while it's great to have, you know, multiple windows that you can have and resize to your liking, you do feel a little crammed, especially if you want your sidebar with the other applications that you can just uh, pull to the to center stage, or uh, if you want your dock to be showing at any time, you do feel that crunch on the 12.9 inch screen. So just about an inch bigger here at 14.1, uh, we are gonna see a, a little bit more room to stretch out those windows and almost give you exactly enough room to have uh, your dock and your sidebar as well. And so that's screen size, but now let's talk about that larger chassis. 14.1 inches, hmm, that seems like it could have the same, if not a bigger thermal envelope than the 13 inch, the 13.6 inch MacBook Air. Who knows? And at this point, could we see potential for an M2 Pro chip inside? Now, of course, the MacBook Air only has the M2, and there's no option for the M2 Pro at all. The M2 Pro doesn't even really exist as far as we know yet, but we know it's coming. This makes sense to me because at the 14-inch MacBook Pro level, right, you've got at $2,000 the option for M Pro, well, M1 Pro right now, but I'm just saying M Series Pro. Also with the Mac Studio, $2,000. It's got a much bigger thermal envelope, but also an M Series Pro at the starting price. $2,000 seems like a starting point for their Pro Series chips, and that's why I think this could be something that happens on a 14-inch device, which is very close, 0.1 inches away from that 14-inch MacBook Pro as well. And now, guys, thank you for sticking around to the end as I've got my WWD 
DC 2023 prediction. So what did we talk about? We talked about mini LED and ProMotion on a 14.1 inch potentially M2 Pro iPad Pro starting at $2,000 in 2023. This is where I'm gonna say we're gonna get Final Cut Pro and we're gonna get Logic Pro coming to the iPad in 2023. WWDC 2023, that's what I'm gonna nail down here. Uh, I really do think that if we, especially if we see this device materialize in the fall of this year, 2022, then come dub dub 23, we're gonna see Logic Pro and Final Cut Pro, and it's gonna open the floodgates for all the Pro devices to come to the iPad. This is my prediction. I really think uh, we've already seen the groundwork laid and there's a really good chance of this happening now let's wrap up of course with this 20 inch macbook pro device i think that what this is going to come down to is really operating system if they're talking about a foldable device that has a simulated keyboard much like on an iphone or an ipad and then a 14 inch display or whatever if they split it 10 and 10 inches or what have you right um it's really going to come down to is it running mac os or is it running ipad os i think that's really going to be the only difference i think it'll come with an M2 Pro chip, M2 Pro Max chip, maybe even an Ultra chip. Again, this is going to depend on the thermals, but what it will do is it will introduce touch to the Mac if it has a Mac OS, um, which is not necessarily true because they're still putting that touch bar on the 13 inch M2 MacBook Pro with a fan which I don't know who that's for, but it seems like Apple's uh, just under the table keeping touch around on the Mac um, so that they can still have a team that's dedicated to touch on the Mac. And I talked about this in a video maybe about a year ago now. If you go back and watch my videos, you'll see I was talking about the reason why they're going to keep touch bar on the Mac for a while is because they want to maintain that touch team for the Mac. And that could be what we're seeing come full come full circle here with a 20 inch MacBook device that is foldable and touchscreen.